the sacred principles of general relativity is that gravity cannot propagate faster than the speed of light. If it did, the mathematicians assert that the calculation of planetary positions and their mutual gravitational influences would lead to different predictions for where the planets are in the sky at a specific time. Indeed, general relativity predicts that if the sun were to disappear at this very moment, you would not feel the effect until eight minutes later, the time it would take for the gravitational waves or gravitons to reach you at the speed of light. It takes eight minutes for the sun's rays to travel the 93 million miles to the earth. And since he had shown that nothing, not even gravity, can travel faster than light, how could the Earth be released from orbit before the darkness resulting from the sun's disappearance reached our eyes? General Relativity's amusing prediction is not only absurd, but patently wrong. The disappearing sun thought experiment violates the mathematical definitions of the words weight and gravity. Weight, the force that a mass m experiences due to gravity of another mass. Gravitation, a natural phenomenon by which objects with mass attract one another. Weight and gravity require two objects. The relativistic thought experiment alleges that if the sun and the earth were the only objects in the universe and we remove the sun, the earth continues to have weight. Relativists argue in essence that the earth is not really pulled by the sun itself, but by a field, an abstract mathematical concept that somehow continues to influence matter even after the sun is gone. Thus, until the rest of this mysterious concept vanishes, the earth is not free of gravity. The mathematicians are saying that the concept justice attracts a rock. They are saying that a magnetic field can exist without the magnet. Of course, the mathematicians arrive at such ridiculous conclusions because they have never defined the word field. They have no idea what a field is. Another fatal problem with a relativistic notion of weight is speed. The same box has a different weight at different locations. Location is a static concept. The definition of weight implies that if you and the sun were the only objects in the universe and you move one inch closer towards the sun, your weight changes instantaneously. You are now at a different location. Certainly you will not have to wait eight minutes for the sun to send you mathematical point particles to your new location. The obvious discrepancy between instantaneous weight change and one-way particles can only be resolved by defining the word motion rigorously. The mathematicians credit their hero Isaac Newton with discovering three alleged laws of motion. However, this is an unjustified claim because Newton never defined the word motion and had no idea what this word means. I do not define time, space, place and motion as being well known to all. Of course, Newt. If we already know what the word motion means, why waste your time defining it? Newton's disciples have not done any better. The mathematicians define motion as a constant change where change is to make different from what it would be if left alone if the definition of motion invokes the word change it is circular change implicitly involves motion it is shocking to discover that after 400 years not a single mathematician has grasped such a fundamental concept as motion there's not a single textbook of physics that tells you what it means to move this realization makes a mockery of the establishment's unjustified claim that mathematical physics is founded upon rigorous definitions. In physics, we define motion as two or more locations of an object. Motion is a film clip of an object at successive locations. We need at least two frames of the universal movie to conceptualize motion. Therefore, the terms instantaneous motion and infinite speed are oxymorons. Instantaneous motion implies that something moved in a photograph. Certainly, we cannot simulate instantaneous motion or weight change with particles. A particle can be in one frame of the movie or another, but not in both simultaneously. It is as a result of not defining the word motion rigorously that Newton erroneously concluded that the universal equation is about force. The gravitational force exerted on the object of a certain mass. 
This notion is certainly wrong because a force is an influence on a body or system producing or tending to produce a change in movement, a push or pull experienced by a mass m when it is accelerated. Force is a dynamic concept. Conversely, weight is a static concept. Weight depends on the location of the object. Weight is location specific, and location is a static concept. Force requires a change in location. These two equations are qualitatively different. The definition of weight implies that if an object occupies a new location closer to or away from the sun, its weight changes instantaneously. What Newton and his successors failed to realize is that weight is not a force. Weight is a tension, and a tension is not a force. Tension differs from force in that it is a static concept. Under tension, no one wins the tug of war. Newton's gravitational equation is not about force, but about tension. The equation says that there are two objects separated by a distance. This distance is the qualitative static gap between two objects. The objects are not moving at that precise moment. They are merely separated by space. In contrast, the inherently dynamic acceleration in Newton's second law embodies the distance traveled by one object. Consistent with the definition of weight as a location-specific concept, if the distance between the objects changes, the weight of either object changes instantaneously. Tension is instantaneous in the sense that my fingers constantly feel the tension of the rubber band. You can stretch the rubber band to the other side of the universe, and I would continue to feel the tension at all times. In physics, we can simulate pressure and push with particles. We can only simulate tension and pull with extended objects such as chains, cords, cables, threads, and ropes. We certainly cannot model tension and attraction with one-way particles or waves. In the next video, we will explain why weight is location-specific. Gravitational tension acts instantaneously and from a distance because this phenomenon is mediated by extended electromagnetic ropes. The scientific method is comprised of three indispensable parts, hypothesis, theory, and conclusions. If any of these three elements is missing, the proponent is not doing science. A theory without a hypothesis is unscientific. Isaac Newton confessed that he had no hypothesis for instantaneous action at a distance suggested by his equation. He gave us no insight into the underlying causes and reasons for why weight is location specific. The bottom line is that Newton did not explain. Newton just described something that he did not understand. Newton was not a scientist. Newton was just a mathematician.